Are you ready to run? And I mean you better run fast because these zombies are cranked up. Let's do the Dawn of the Dead remake. Let's do it. All right, folks, we are doing Dawn of the Dead 2004. And I, since I did the original Dawn of the Dead last week, I figured I'd do the remake. I watched this last night. Um, when this movie was first announced, I was very skeptical and not thrilled with it. First time filmmaker, nobody knew who Zack Snyder was at the time. James Gunn wrote it, and up to that point, besides doing some trauma films, he only wrote Scooby-Doo. I wasn't feeling great about this film. I did, actually, I did not see this in the movie theater. I did not. I skipped it. I remember I remember they aired the first 10 minutes, the whole first 10 minutes of the movie on USA. I think it was during wrestling or something. I don't remember what show it was on. I think it was during wrestling, but I could be wrong. I remember watching it, and it looked interesting. But for whatever reason, I didn't go see it. I don't remember why. It was released in March of 2004. I just didn't see it. I didn't see it until it came out. I bought the DVD when it came out. And when I sat and watched it for the first time, I was surprised on how good it turned out. And that was just me not giving the movie a fair shake. I was just, I loved the original movie, and I just, I couldn't see anybody even coming close to that. Is this better than the original movie? I say no, but it's a pretty good horror film on its own. And it's a decent remake. It really is. Um, this movie had a budget of $26 million, so obviously it had a hell of a lot more money than George Romero did back in the 70s. When it was released in 2004, it made $59 million in the U.S. and 102 worldwide. And as we know, the movie was directed by Zack Snyder, his first theatrical film, and it was written by James Gunn. Um, the cast, uh, we have Sarah Pauly as Anna, Ving Rhames as Kenneth, Jake Weber as Michael, Michael Kelly as CJ, the head uh, security guard for the mall, Ty Burrell as Steve, and he's kind of a prick as the movie goes on, and Lindy Booth as Nicole. In order to bring her up, her character specifically, and I'll talk about her a little later in this review, her character does some dumbass shit later on that oh my god but we'll get into that as we go along um like i said they did i remember when they showed the first 10 minutes of the film and the first 10 minutes of the film is dynamite stuff it really is it shows anna she's a nurse she's at the hospital she's working all day and she gets relieved and she goes home we get introduced to her husband briefly well she first before she goes in the house she stops and talks to one of the neighborhood girls and she goes, oh, I'll show you how to go backwards on your roller skates later on. I'm going to go rest for a little bit. So she goes in the house and her and her husband get a shower and they go to bed. People, lock your damn doors. This is the first point of contention. If you're going to bed, lock your goddamn doors. I don't know why people do that shit, um, but they live in the suburbs. So I guess they feel, oh, we don't have to lock our doors. Bullshit, you got to lock your doors. But anyway, um, her husband gets startled out of, out of bed, the little girl standing at the bottom of the bed. And he notices that half some of her face is chewed on, looks chewed on. It's all damaged right here. And he he wake he tells Anna call the call for an ambulance. There's something wrong. And the girl bites him in the neck. And here we go. And this zombie disease kicks in fast. Like her husband goes down onto the bed and he's bleeding everywhere. And Anna throws the little girl out in the hallway and slams the door shut. And not with within thirty seconds he turns into a zombie. And these zombies aren't like Romero zombies. These these are like zombies all cranked up on something, man. Because they, they're fast, they're strong. And Anna gets flung into the bathroom and the door closes behind her. She lands in the tub and her husband starts pounding on the door wanting to get to her. And they're like frenzied, almost like the 28, later, 28 days later people. Only these are zombies and 28 days later they say they're infected. That's the difference. Anna gets out the bathroom, when it gets to the car, her husband comes running out, jumps on the hood and puts... Put, starts smashing the glass with his fist and she pulls out and there's chaos all around her throughout her neighborhood and she starts driving and this is where we get the aerial shot over top falling the car and all this crazy shit's going on and she comes to a stop behind this bus and there's this lady getting torn apart you can't see it. it's like in silhouette and this guy tries to carjack her and she takes off and she ends up going off the road down this hill and crashes into a tree cut to credits and during the credit sequence, it's kind of like the original Donna Dead. In a minute with the credits, it gives us little information from a news broadcast. And then she wakes up, and this is where we meet Ving Rhames' character, Kenneth. He's a police officer. He's standing with a shotgun. He doesn't know what to make of her at first, and he realizes she's human, and she kind of tags along with him. And then they come across some other people, like Michael Jake Weber's character and his young couple, and the wife's pregnant of this young couple. And... Right away, Ving Rhames doesn't like 
the husband. Like, you could tell he's kind of trouble. And they keep going on. And Ving Rhames', Ving Rhames character says, I want to get the fort, this fort that where his brother is. That's his only goal, really. And they end up in this, sh this mall. And they get inside. And they have to kill a couple zombies. And then we're introduced to the security guards. There's three mall security guards. One's played by Michael Kelly. I'm not going to get into the other ones. And he's kind of like this. So, like, at first you just think, oh, he's just a rent a cop. You know, what the hell does he know? But they're armed security. They have guns on them. And they're very, they don't even want to deal with these people. They want them to leave, but they won't leave. So they let them stay, but they lock them up in this one storefront at night. And that, and then eventually our characters get the upper hand on them and they lock them up. Except for the one younger guard who's on their side because CJ is wanting to kill these people to stay alive. And the other kid doesn't want to do that. He thinks it's wrong. Now, CJ is a dick at first, but later on in the movie, he shows that he actually does have some chops, and he knows how to handle himself, and, you know, he knows his way around a firearm, and he's actually very useful, but at first, you just hate this guy. He's just a douchebag on a power trip. That's what he seems like. And these other people come to the mall in this box truck, and they help them get in the building, but by this point, the mall's surrounded by zombies, and... Their only contact really is this guy on top of a roof of this gun store right down the street. They could see him through binoculars. And he's picking off zombies and he's all alone. And um, and then our young couple has a, a secret. The wife had gotten bitten, but the husband doesn't want to tell anybody. And there's a really dis disturbing scene where the wife is, he has her strapped to a bed and you can tell she's dying. She doesn't look good. And she dies, and she comes back as a zombie, and she gives birth, and the baby's a zombie. And this woman, this one older woman who has had come to the mall in a box truck, goes to check on him, and she realizes she's a zombie, and she shoots him, and the guy ends up shooting her. And he's like, why do you want to kill my family? And the guy's totally lost it. But the guy is so stupid, there's a nurse there, have him look at it. And he's so afraid that people are going to want to kill his wife because she was bitten. But it's like, dude, you got to... You know, I, it's an emotional situation. I get it, but it's just the guy acts so freaking stupid and just unreasonable about the whole thing. And then um, they decide they got to leave the mall and get out of there. And uh, the the Dick Steve Ty Burrell's character has a boat at the marina, and their plan is they're gonna soup up the the the, um, the shuttles in the basement, the car, the garage, and they're gonna try to make it to the marina so they can go to an island and try to ride this out, whatever's going on. And by this point, there's thousands and thousands of zombies outside the mall. So they show them souping up these these vehicles, and in the meantime, they find a dog in the mall, and Nicole's character, Lindy Booth, becomes very attached to this dog. And the guy at the gun store tells them, this is right before they're getting ready to make their move, they're going to pick up the guy at the gun store, get more ammo, and head for the marina. That's their plan. They send the dog over, because for whatever reason, the zombies don't want to eat a dog. And the dog goes over, but unfortunately, in the process of this gentleman getting the food... The zombie's going to bite him. Lindsay, or, um, Nicole is so heartbroken over it, she takes one of the vehicles and drives over there to try to get the dog back. It's like, look, I love my dogs too, but in that situation, you're a moron. Absolute effing moron. I'm like, I, this, this chick is out of control. But that's just one of the stupid things that happen. And they have to, go, they want to go get her get the dog, and they need ammo. So they go over, some of the guys go in the sewers over, hop up a manhole, and go, they do this really cool thing with a, a propane tank, and they kill a bunch of zombies, and they get up, it gives them enough time to get to the store and get inside. They find Nicole and the dog, they load up, get more guns, they kill the gun store owner, and they get back to the mall, and this is where our crew gets in their vehicles and drives through this horde of zombies. And just to get to the, ch the chase of it, by the time they get to the arena, marina, the one vehicle crashes. Some of the people are dead. The only people alive are Kenneth, Michael, Anna. CJ still alive, but he gives his life to save some of the other ones. This is where this is the part of the movie where he really becomes useful, and he's actually one of the group instead of somebody that looks down on the, these people. Like, so he actually becomes a really good character. Ty Burrell's character gets killed, and some of them, uh, our main characters, make it on a boat and take off. Michael does not. He gets bit and he stays behind and he ends up shooting himself. And that's the end of the movie. Um, this movie's a souped-up version of the original Dawn of the Dead. It follows some of the same beats, but it it creates a new enough new stuff to make it its own film. Um, 
it it doesn't have as much deeper meaning as the original Dawn of the Dead. That's not what they're going for here. It's more action, gore. It's not as gory as the original Dawn of the Dead, but there, it is quite gory. The unrated cut is quite gory. Um, it's slicker, obviously. George Romero made his movie independently. It's more guerrilla filmmaking. This is more stylized, slick looking as Zack Snyder, as we've seen from Zack Snyder over the years. I like Zack Snyder as a filmmaker. I like a bunch of his movies, not all, but most of his movies. Um, and here he shows what he, he can do with the action. At The action's well shot, and there's some cool sequences. Um, some of the characters, I mean, it, basically, they're in them all, and it's just more characters. Where in the original, it's just the four of them in the mall, and that's it. Until the bikers come along. This one, there's no marauders that show up. It's just them, this big group of people in the mall. Some people die off here and there from different things. But I, it's well done. Um, it was cool to have the cameos by Ken Foray as a preacher on TV. And he gets to say, repeat his same line from the original movie in this movie. Just as a preacher. Tom Savini shows up as a sheriff. And um, the guy um, the guy who played Scott, who was in the first movie. Scott Ridlinger, who played Peter, is in this film too. Is like a military guy. And they even named one of the stores in the mall is called Galen Ross. And that was the actress who played Fran in the original movie. So that's kind of cool little callbacks. Um, I like this film. I don't like it as much as the original, but it's a fun film to sit down and watch. Um, Ving Rhames actually lobbied for the role in this film. When he heard they were remaking Dawn of the Dead, he wanted to be in the film. And the producers gave him the, the role, and he's really good in the movie. Ving Rhames is always solid in any movie he's in. It's always a pleasure to see him in a film. Um, he doesn't do enough anymore, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I would give the Dawn of the Dead remake, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. It's a good horror film. It's a good remake. Um, like again, again, it's not as good as the original, but I like this film. Um, 8 out of 10 for the Dawn of the Dead remake. That's it for me. What are your thoughts on the Dawn of the Dead remake? Do you like it more than the, than the original film? Um, do you like this movie at all? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Um, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. I greatly appreciate it. And that's it for me. Um, I'll be back soon. I hope you all take care of yourselves. Have an awesome day. And I'll be back soon. Thanks.